Hi everyone, welcome to the beginner's guide to Shopify, where we'll be building your account from the ground up and getting you ready to make your first sale. Let's get started. Now to kick off your Shopify journey, we'll need to start off by creating an account. Now if you have one, feel free to skip forward. Otherwise, let's just walk through the early steps of creating your account. Now, if you need to create a Shopify account using the link in the description, you'll be able to get started on an extended trial period where you'll get the first three days free. And then for the first three months, you'll pay $1 per month. So we're just gonna start off by entering our email address and then selecting to start the free trial. Now, feel free to answer these questions. You can also skip through these if you like. So we can just skip through all of these. Now, if you don't have a name, feel free to skip this one. But for today's purpose, we're just gonna name this one the organic soap bar. Click next. Now, currently located in Australia, feel free to select whichever country you're located in. Next. Now, as I already have an account created, I'll be using that one today. Although, if you don't have one, feel free to select add account and follow the steps. So once you're into your Shopify account, you'll start off on the home dashboard. Now from here, we wanna to navigate to online store. If this isn't here for you, you might just need to use the search bar to navigate there. To do so, just search in online store. Themes will pop up. Now that's where we want it to go. So let's click themes. So as you can see, it starts off with the Dawn theme. Now this is the free sort of skeleton theme for Shopify. The Dawn theme does have its place. Although for today's purposes, we're gonna be downloading another one of Shopify's free themes. So to do that, we're gonna be scrolling down and clicking visit theme store. So once that's loaded, we can see there's a range of free and paid themes. Feel free to take a look through all of them and see if any might stand out and reflect your branding. Although sometimes these paid themes can be quite an investment when you're first getting started and you might not find they have as much functionality or customization as they appear to have from the outside. So I'd suggest starting off with a free theme when first getting started with Shopify and it'll also help you to understand how components work so then you can see how the paid themes might translate across. So then when you do a free trial of the paid theme, you'll start to see if that theme does have as much customization as you'd like it to have, or if you might be better off actually adding customization on top of that free theme, as that might still be cheaper than paying the extra 350 US. So as we'll be going with a free theme, we're just gonna select the filter here for free. And then from this range, we can see there's a few different options here. Well, I think for the style we'll be going for today, we're just gonna select the sense theme. So once you've selected the theme that you'd like to go with, you can see there's two options to try the theme and view demo store. So feel free to select view demo store as that'll give you an idea of the store when it's completely mocked up with content and imagery in there. Although we're just gonna jump straight in and select try theme. And this is gonna install the theme onto our Shopify account. So now that that's done downloading, we're gonna select publish as this is gonna replace the current theme, which is Dawn. Now, if you do have an existing Shopify account with a website that's running with customers making purchases, I would suggest leaving this theme as unpublished for now and making changes from the unpublished view. And then once you're done making those changes, you can select to publish and replace that store just so you don't make any confusion for your customers when they're trying to purchase any of your products. So now that we've made this the current theme, we're just gonna select customize. So we're now inside the visual customizer, which will allow you to edit the website through the visual editor. So starting at the top, we can see a drop down here. This will allow us to navigate to all of the internal pages or other pages that we'll be building out later on. Although we'll just be sticking to homepage for now. So if we go across to this desktop icon, we can see there's three options here when we click inside. So we can go full screen, desktop or mobile. Now, if you're on a smaller laptop screen, for instance, you might want to opt for full screen when previewing your changes as this side menu will pop out and take up a good portion of your screen if you don't have that real estate to work with. And then mobile, this will allow us to see what the website will look like on a mobile device. Great thing about these free Shopify themes, they're often all optimized for mobile without you having to do too much work. So you might not actually have to touch anything there. Although for now, we're just gonna to stick to desktop. So we're gonna go back and just select desktop view. Now, if we head over to the side here, we can see our different components. Now the template layout will always have a header at the top and a footer at the bottom. Now Shopify has recently introduced the option to add sections into the footer, which that'll apply universally throughout your website. So as you can see, the theme has the email signup already as a footer component. 
And we're just going to leave that there because we will like to use that and collect people's emails as they navigate through the website. Now in between the header and the footer sections, we've got the template body sections. So this is where we'll be spending most of our time shortly, although we're just going to leave these for now and focus on getting the header and the announcement bar all ready to go. So if we start off by selecting announcement bar, we'll see this drops down and we actually have the welcome to our store text there. So we're just going to select that for now and we're going to replace welcome to our store with just our promotional text, which this will be different for everyone. Although for today's purpose, we're going to be putting promotional text, which will be a discount code for a first time order. So once you've added that text in, we're going to need to change the color of the background. Now, as you can see, the theme has an option to select a color scheme. So we can select from background two, background one, and so forth. However, none of these colors actually match our branding just yet. So what we're going to do is jump into the theme settings and start applying our brand colors. So if we head on over to the far left hand side, we'll see there's a paintbrush and this is for theme settings. So we want to select that one. Once you've done that, we're going to navigate to colors to start with. Now within colors, we can see there's a few different options here and each of these applying to different elements of the page. For instance, we can see the background here is the background gradient, so background two. Now the background two, which is the non-gradient, is actually a fallback. So if a browser is unable to interpret the gradient styling, it'll just fall back to the flat coloring of background two. And similar for background one gradient and background one. So for background two, we're just gonna be adding in one of the branded colors for this one. So I've just copied this hex code in Although if you're just getting started and still experimenting with coloring, this is a great time to see how the different colors might influence the look and feel of your website and also what colors go with your imagery. Now, once we've added in background two, we're actually not gonna be using the radio gradient for this website today. So we're just gonna be clicking on this and selecting remove gradient. We can also now do the same for background one. We can just remove this gradient as well. Now we can see background one is applied to the background of the body of the website and we're actually just wanting that to be white. So we're just gonna click into there and we're just gonna drag the color selector all the way to the top left and we'll see that go white. Now for the text, we're just gonna actually change this to the branded green. So again, just gonna copy across that hex code and we're just gonna see that change over now. And for the accent, similar thing, we're gonna be applying the green for the accent so now that we've added that, we'll see that the recently selected colors appear and we can simply just select those colors from there. So now that our announcement bar is looking good, we can move on to the header. Inside of the header, we can see the store name is being pulled through, but we do want to add the logo. So we're just going to select within theme settings, logo. And then here you can see we can either select image or you can drag an image in. So we're actually just going to drag this image in now. Once you've added it, you can see the logo is quite small. So we're just gonna increase the logo width. Perfect, and then for the favicon, while we're here, we'll add this as well. Now, if you don't have one at this stage, that's completely fine. You can always come back and add either the logo or the favicon in at any time. So now that we've added those in, we can see that the logo is getting a little bit lost in the background. So we're just gonna select on the header. Once the header settings have appeared, we can see the color scheme is set to background one which background one is the color we're using for the background of the body, which is white. So we're actually going to want to change this to the green. Now inverse is taking the color of the background and the color of the font and simply inverting those. Once you've got the color scheme you like, we're then gonna adjust the logo positioning and we're just gonna change that to middle center. We'll leave the menu as is for now and also leave it as drop down for now. So moving on to sticky header, currently it's set to on scroll up which this just means it will only appear when you go to scroll up. Personally, I'd rather set this to always show and just reduce the logo size so when you scroll, it just takes up a little bit less space. So if we give that a go now, we'll see that the header does stay there, but the logo shrinks slightly. So it's still there, but just slightly less visible or in your face as it is when you first land on the page. Now, I think we're done with the header and we can move on to the template body sections. So to introduce you to template sections, the key functions of these before we dive into the individual sections is we can drag these around using the little toggle on the side here. We can hide these. So you might wanna have a section appear for a campaign 
and then hide it for a few days and bring it back, you might be best just to hide that rather than remove it completely. If however, you don't want to keep that component, you can either select the component and then go to remove it down here or you can also remove at the bottom of the section settings. So we can go remove section. Now, if you don't want to remove a section and actually want to duplicate it, you can also do that. So you select the section. In the top right hand corner of the section settings, you'll see the three dots. These three dots, we just click that and we can select duplicate. I don't think we quite need two feature collections at this stage. So we'll just remove one of those for now. And then we'll also be adding back in a section for the hero. So the very first thing that people will see on the website, this will consist of an image, text and a call to action. So for this, we're best to use either the image with text, image banner or slideshow components. Now I'll be using the image with text today, although feel free to use either of the others. We're gonna to need to move that above the feature collection as we want this to be the hero section. So we're just gonna click here and drag up and take that to the top. Now the first thing to do is to add the image. So again, we can either select the image or drag this in. So I'm just gonna be dragging in an image here. Perfect, so we can see that's loaded in. So to get started with the image with text section, we can either drag an image in or select image. So I'm just gonna drag an image in. Once that's added, I'm gonna change the image height to medium. The desktop width, I'm gonna change this to large. We're gonna switch the image to actually be second. We're gonna change the content position to middle. And we're gonna change the content layout to overlap. Now the last thing here is the color scheme. This will also be changed to background too as we wanna give it that branded touch, but we don't wanna go the harshness of the dark green, for instance. So now that we've got the layout sorted, we can start editing the text. So we're just gonna go into the heading text here. Now I'm just gonna copy and cross some text that I've prepared earlier, although feel free to add whatever you like here or leave it as placeholder for now. And you can always come back and change this later on. As we can see, the text is a little bit too big for this space. So we're actually gonna change the heading size to small and that just fits perfectly inside that space. And now we're just gonna add a little bit more text in now the last block to work with is the button. As you can see, it's currently grayed out, but it's just because it's missing a button link. So we're just gonna change this to shop now. And then we're also just gonna link this to an all products page. Once you've done that, click save. Now, before we move on to the next section, one thing to think about when you're taking your product imagery is to think about where it'll also be going on your website. Many people take their product imagery and they put the product front and center although they miss the point that there'll be text around that image sometimes, or it might be used on other platforms like Instagram or Facebook ads, and you might need a little bit of leeway to have text to the left, to the right, or in the center of that frame. So that's one thing to keep in mind when taking your product imagery, as that'll play a crucial role in make sure the imagery fits seamlessly on the website and everything doesn't kind of look out of place. So now that we're finished with the hero section, we're gonna scroll down and work on the featured collection. So if we click into Featured Collection, we can start off by changing the heading here. So again, just gonna change this one over. We've got Discover our new range. And then we'll leave the heading size as small. And you can add a description if you like, although we're gonna leave this as blank for now. Now currently we don't have any products. So what we're gonna quickly do is we're gonna jump out and we're gonna add a few products in and then we'll come back to this editor shortly. So before we do that, we're just gonna click Save and then we're going to want to open up your Shopify admin page just in a new tab. So how you can do that is we can go up to the top left here and don't click exit, but we're gonna right click and we'll go open link in new tab. And then we've got the new tab open here. So now we're gonna to navigate to that new tab. On the left hand navigation, we're gonna select products. Now we're gonna select add your product. Once you've opened this page, you can now see all the content fields that we have to work with when it comes to adding in a product. So we've got the product title, product description, we've got the product imagery, for pricing, we'll be working with this input for now. The compare app price is what we'll use when it comes to a sale item, which we can get to shortly. We'll then want to add in a quantity of stock. So we're just gonna put 10 for now. Make sure that this number is actually reflective of your stock quantities and you don't just make this number up. And then we've got variance. So this won't actually apply to the products we'll be putting in as placeholders for today. Although we will be adding a variant in just so you can see how to set those up and the different settings that Shopify makes available to you. So we're just gonna start off by adding the product title. Now you don't have to use real product information at this stage, although I would suggest still mocking up a placeholder product for now, just so you get the feel for how Shopify works. So we're just gonna get started by adding the product title. 
Now, even if you don't have products just yet, I would still suggest doing this process. It'll just help you get familiar with Shopify's product setup process and also get you familiar with how these inputs will link through to the theme itself. And then we'll add the product description and then going down to the media where you can either select these from your computer or just drag these in. So we're just gonna drag one of these in for now and then set the price. If it's just a placeholder product, feel free to set this to whatever you like for now. We'll still leave the compare at price for this one, but we'll come back to that shortly. Feel free to add the cost per item, although it's not a requisite. Now we'll keep the stock quantity at 10, just for testing purposes. We don't want to continue selling when out of stock. This product has a SKU or barcode. Now I would suggest having a SKU set up for each of your products from the very beginning and have that framework in place. So if you have any questions, please just let me know and I'm happy to discuss it with you. Now for the physical product weight, we're just gonna leave this as zero for now. Although do feel free to add in your shipping weight as this can help when it comes to the shipping calculations. So for variance, we're just gonna leave this as is for now and we're actually just gonna select save. And now that that's done, we can see that it's publishing across our online and point of sale channels. Obviously we don't have a point of sale set up, so it'll just be visible on our online store. So you can also select to schedule a product to publish at a certain date or time. So this is something to think about if you have a certain release coming up, or if you might just not be able to be by your computer when that time comes, this can take care of that step for you. So now that we've got our first product set up, now we're just gonna create a few more products while we're here. So there's two ways you can go about doing this. One way is duplicating a product. So if your product is very similar in nature, but just has a few slight variances, this can be a great way to speed things up. Otherwise, we can also just go back and go add product. So this time we're just gonna add a product and use a few more of the fields that Shopify provides to us just to see how those different fields will influence the theme and how the product page will actually appear when viewing the different products. So let's add those in now. So for this one, we're just gonna be adding in another product title. Now we're just gonna use the same description just for time's sake. Now for the media, just drag that in. Now for the price, this time we're gonna set a compare at price. So this means the product will appear like it's on sale. So the way this works is that say we normally have this set to $50. When you wanna put the product on sale, this will actually change to the sale price. So let's say we change that to $30. The compare at price would then be $50. So now the $30 will be compared to 50. So we'll have that $20 discount. And we're just gonna keep going down. We're gonna set quantity again. We'll just set that to 10 for now. Again, would suggest setting a SKU, but we'll just leave that blank for the time being. So we're just gonna create a variant as well. And this one, we're just gonna set the size. So let's just pretend the oil has two different sizes. So we can set this to 50 mil, or we can also set this to 150 mil option and select done. We're just gonna change the price of the 150 mil option to $45 and then just click save. So now that we've saved that, Shopify's detected this variance and it's actually removed a few of the options that we had before. One of those key options being the price block. So now that the price block is moved, we need to edit the pricing and the compare at pricing within the individual variance. So once we're inside this variant, we can select edit and then we can see the compare at price which this is defaulted to what we had set previously. Although as this is the more expensive option, we're actually just gonna increase that to $70. Now for the variants, you can also have separate imagery for each variant. So if you do have images of the different bottle sizes or the different colors, you can import a different image for each of those variants here. So feel free to do so. And you can see how that'll interact once you change those variants on the product page. So we're now just gonna exit out of here and then I'm just gonna add a few more products and we'll be back in a second. So now that we're done adding our products, we're now gonna create our first collections. So we're just gonna select collections from the left-hand navigation here. We're going to remove the homepage collection. Then we're gonna select create collection. Now you can call this collection whatever you like. We're just gonna call this natural essence. You can then add your collection description and then also add an image in. So we're just gonna add in an image here. So now that we've taken care of the creative side of things, we now need to configure the collection itself. So we can either select a manual or an automated collection. Now manual, pretty straightforward. You have to manually add, remove, and arrange the products within that collection. Or we can use an automated collection, which can use filtering to just automatically add and remove those products based on the product attributes themselves. So in this case, we're gonna select any product with the tag natural essence. We can go save. Once we've done that, we can go back to our products 
and we're going to select natural essence bars and we're going to add in the tag natural essence. So now that we've done that, we'll click save. And if we give that a refresh, we will see now that this has been auto added to the collection natural essence. So we can now do the same thing for the other products and collections. So now just gonna add one more collection here. So we're gonna go create collection and we're gonna call this one handmade bars. We're gonna add in the collection description. We're then gonna add an image and we're gonna make the product tag equal to handmade. And save. And now the difference with this one, we're going to add the tag to multiple products. So if we head back to products, now this time we're going to select all. So we're going to select the little checkbox here to select all of them. Now you can just select individually if you like. So you could just go through and select the ones you want. But we're going to select all of those. Then we're going to go down to the three dots, click that. And we're going to say add tags. Now we're going to add the tag handmade. Now make sure that this is spelt correctly as it is case sensitive. So we're gonna select add and then save. Now, if we go back to the collections, so we should see handmade bars with four products and we're all done. So I'm just gonna add one or two more collections just for mock-up purposes and then we'll get back into it. So now that we have our four collections ready to go, we're gonna head back to the themes customizer. So we're just gonna go back to that tab that we had open before. So now that we're back on the themes customizer, we can see that the products are now populating as we have a few different collections, we can actually select which collection will appear here. So if we click into the section, we can then see it's currently set to show all. Now if we change this for instance to natural essence, we're gonna see it's only gonna pull the one product through from that collection. Although obviously we wanna show all of our new range. So instead we're gonna show handmade bars for now. We're gonna select handmade bars for now and click select. So now that we've got our feature collection in there, we can now go in to add a new section. The next section we're gonna add is a customer testimonial. So this is gonna be a rich text block. So we're gonna select rich text. And then we're gonna see an option here where we have the rich text section with a few individual blocks underneath. These blocks work similar to sections where they can also be rearranged by the drag and drop. And we can also add different blocks in. So in this case, we won't be needing the buttons, so we can select those and click remove. So for the testimonial, just gonna select the heading and we're gonna add our testimonial in here. So just copy and paste that over, or you can type it in if you like. Now, obviously that's looking a little bit too big. So we're gonna change the heading size to small, much better. And then inside of the text, we're going to add the testimonial name or feel free to leave that blank. And you could also just have the rich text block. Now it looks a little bit boring going from white to white. So we're actually gonna just select the rich text section. You can do so by clicking or selecting rich text. And we're gonna change that background to background two. So that'll just break it up that as we scroll through, it'll break up the page. And we're gonna continue adding sections between here and the subscribe to our email section. So now that we're finished with the rich text block, we're gonna add a new section. Now this time we're gonna add a collage section. So as you can see, the collage section has multiple blocks within it. So we have image, product, collection, and there's also an option for video as well, but you can only have a maximum of three blocks at a time. For this one, we're only gonna use the product. So we're just gonna remove the collection block and we're also gonna remove the image block. Now that we've just got the product block, we're gonna select that product and we're going to go select product. Let's make this one the natural essence bars, go select, and then we're gonna add another block which will be a product and we can make this one the essential bundle and we'll add one more, which we can make this one the nourishing trio. So now you can see how it creates the collage effect. So we have three different products with different image sizing and that is what influences the sizing of that collage or the aspect ratio. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. And you could also rearrange these to see how they'll look if you mixed it up a little bit. So I think after playing around, we'll put those back in the original order and we'll leave it as is. Now, one last touch is we're actually just gonna remove this multimedia collage title. And we'll just leave this heading as blank as I don't think it needs a heading. Now, one thing that you do want to include on your website is the main features or benefits of shopping with your store. So what we can do is we can add another section which we can select multi-column. So within the multi-column, each column can feature an image, a heading, description, and also a link. So this can also act as a click through to an internal page where you might have more information about that certain feature or benefit. So in this case, we can just start off by editing the section itself. So again, we'll remove the heading for this one. We're going to include four components. So we'll have four columns. We're going to want to center align these. 
We don't want any background on each column, so remove that. And we also won't have a button for this section. So once we're done making those changes, we can now edit each column individually. So we're now going to select the first column. And as you can see, we have the image, heading, description. So we can add each of those in individually now. So we're gonna start off by adding the first icon, add the heading, and also add the description. And we can do the same thing for the next one. And now just to add the last column, we just go back to the section here and select add column. And we can see that appear there, and then you can add the information again. And now we have all four of those in there. So we're just gonna remove the heading from this section as well. And this section is all done. And now next, we're just gonna add one last section here. And this one's just gonna be a collection list. So we're just gonna feature a list of our collections basically. So in this section, you can see the blocks are all collections. So we're just gonna click on this collection and then add in one from the list. And we're just gonna do the same for the others. We might just add one more here. Now you can see that obviously that doesn't look ideal how it drops to a new line. So what we can do, if we select collection list as the section, we can then adjust the setting here for the number of columns. So we could always change this to four, although as you can see, it doesn't quite do the trick either, or we could change it to two, which two by two can be great, although it is quite large and I don't think it's quite fitting for what we're after. So we might actually just hide or remove one of these sections for now, and you can always switch these around. But we'll just put that back to three for now and we'll leave it a square. And we also will just get rid of the heading for this. Now, one thing to flag here is that we can see there's quite nice padding between these two sections. Although underneath this section here, it goes straight to the subscribe to our emails. So we just wanna add a little bit of bottom padding on this one. So if we just drag this slider up, we'll see the padding start to increase. So once you let go, that'll refresh itself. Don't think we quite need that much. Right about there will do the trick. And then you can obviously refine that, but I think that'll do the job for now. So now moving on to the newsletter section. So this is one of the footer sections here. So this will be applied across the website to all pages as it's attached to the footer itself. So within the email section, we have these different blocks. So we can rearrange these if we like. So for instance, if you wanted to have a disclaimer beneath the sign up, you could put that additional context there. Although I don't think we'll be needing to do so for this instance. Instead, we're just gonna change this text. We're gonna change this to get 10% off your first order. Now. Obviously these are just dummy promotions. Well, it's always great to think about how your customers are gonna be shopping your product range and see if these sort of promotions can help increase your average order value or just increase that conversion rate on your website for first time visitors. Now we'll just leave that as is for now because it does what we need. You might have more that you like to add in there. You could also apply the different color schemes, the different background gradients if you like. So have that in mind, but we'll just leave that as it is for now. So now that we're at the footer, we can see that there's no blocks here. So we're going to need to add our first block. So we're going to select add block and we're going to start off with an image. Now this image I envision being the logo. So we're going to drag that file in. There we go. And we just need to probably make that a little bit bigger. Perfect. And alignment, we're probably going to set this to left align. Now we're going to add another block, which is going to be a menu. Now we haven't created the footer menus just yet, but we'll leave this as just a placeholder. We can then add our own unique navigation in shortly. Now we're going to add one more nav here. And we'll just have that as contact us. We can add one more, which is just text. So let's start off with this text. We're just going to add the text in now. We're going to type Australian made, and then we're going to just add in another paragraph of text. And there we go. Now, if we go back to the footer, we can see that it's quite tight against the newsletter block. So we're just going to add a little bit of padding there. So we're going to click on footer and then we're going to scroll down and we're gonna to select top padding. Now, the reason we want to use padding instead of margin is margin will add spacing outside of the section. And what I mean by that is if we add this margin, you're gonna see it's adding it outside, which means we're not seeing the background color be included in that gap. However, padding is within the border so it means when we add this padding in, it's going to keep the background color there and just add spacing from within the section. So we can increase that slightly. Perfect. There we go. Now you also have a few settings here inside the footer section, which we can utilize. So for instance, if you're wanting to include the email sign up inside of the footer, instead of its own section, you can toggle this option where it will appear here. There's also a few other options here. One of the key ones will include show social media icons and we'll also go show payment icons. 
Now these won't be all added until you've added these to the store settings, which we'll get to in just a second. Another one is policy links. Now we can add these through here. We could also add these via the menus themselves. We'll see what it looks like and we'll get to that in a second once we've actually created the policy pages. Now inside of here, we're going to add just placeholder links for now, just so you can see the styling. So this will just trick the theme to thinking that you have a link in there. Make sure that on your own website, you do put the link. So now that we've added those in, you can now see what the social icons look like inside of the theme. Now that we've done that, we're going to click save. And what we need to work on now is our navigations for both the header navigation and also the two footed navigations and also the policy pages. So what we'll start off doing is we'll start on the policy pages. So where we did the same thing before, you could either click policy settings here, or we can go back to the tab we had open before where we got there by right clicking on exit and opening the link in a new tab. Now inside of this tab, if we go to settings, now inside of settings, if we go down to policies, which is right at the bottom here, we can then create a refund policy, privacy policy, and terms of service all through a template and also kickstart our contact information with the template as well. Now this is more so important if you are inside the European Union, but we can touch on that anyway. So going back to the top, we can create our first refund policy using their template. So what we'll do is create from template. Now this auto populates a template policy for you where you'll notice you can fill in a few of the blanks basically. For instance, insert the return address. So you can enter the address there. And if you go down, you'll also see there's a few fields that might not always apply to you or your business. So it is important to remember that these are just a template and they're not 100% perfect based on your exact needs. So do take the time to review these and make sure they are applicable in all areas. Now we're going to go down and do the same thing for privacy policy. So as you can see, we now have a quite a detailed template for the privacy policy. As mentioned before, this is just a template. So make sure you do update any of the fill in the blank sections and also add in any additional information that you might require. Going down to the terms of service, we'll just do the same thing again here where we can auto populate this. And as you can see, it does complete certain sections with your store name already. So if you have entered a dummy store name or haven't entered one yet, do keep in mind that you might need to still update this or correct it when you're ready. So when it comes to your shipping policy, it is best that you create this as it will be dependent on the logistics end where you'll be thinking about your handling time and shipping providers. Now, as contact information is required on the website for European Union purposes, we will create it from the template for this. And again, it's nothing too crazy, but it's just enough to tick the boxes. So make sure you fill this in and don't leave any of the gaps blank. So now that we've done that, we're going to click save. Once that's saved, we're going to exit out of the policy settings. We're going to need to click on the top right hand corner. And this will take us back to our dashboard. Now we can click into navigation, which is under online store, then click on footer menu. We will add another menu shortly. And then we currently have search, so we can just delete this one. And then we can go to add a menu item. Inside of the menu item, we will be adding this to the quick links. So we could feature things like your about page, FAQs, catalog, or collection. If we were to go add in your about page, but then we'll find we don't actually have an about page yet. So what we're going to need to do is we'll exit out of here, hit save for now, and we're just going to quickly go to pages. Now we can currently see that we have one contact page created, but we might just add an our story page. Save that. We're gonna select create another page. Then we might also add an FAQs page. Now that we've done that, we'll head back to navigation, footer menu, add menu item, we'll say our story, type that in again. There we go, so we select that link, go add. Now we'll add another one, we'll do FAQs. So again, type in FAQs, add that page. And then we'll also add a link to shop all, where here you can see through the nav drop down here, we have a few different options. And one of them will be if we go products, and we can go all products. So we can add that in and go add. And one more, we'll add it in for blog. So go blogs and news. So this could change once you start uploading blogs, but for now, this is just for example purposes. And we'll have another video diving into the blog component of things shortly. Now we might want to rearrange these. So you don't have to delete to rearrange. We can, similar to the sections, drag these around. And we'll just move FAQs 
down to the very bottom. And then once we're done with that, we'll go save menu. Now we're gonna exit out of this menu and we're gonna add a new menu. Now this will be footer menu number two. Now you can call this whatever you like, it really doesn't matter. But I think just for this case, it is the second footer menu, so we'll keep it nice and simple. Now select add menu item and we'll type in contact and we'll navigate to the contact page. So we'll add that. Now add another menu item. Now this is where we can create a custom link. So you might for instance want to link to a mobile number. So maybe you don't need everyone to go to your contact page and maybe you'd rather them call you directly. This is more so common for a brick and mortar store that also has an online store. So it could be something that you'll need. So what we'll do is just add the number in here and this will just be a dummy Australian mobile number for instance. Obviously you want this to link to your actual mobile number. And then this is where it's slightly different as we'll be now adding a custom link. So this won't be a selection from one of these links. We'll actually be creating the link ourselves. So we'll be typing in T-E-L colon and then you'll be typing in the mobile number. Now once you've typed in the number, you'll have to click this link before you can click add. Otherwise this will just go blank and you won't be able to add the link. So we'll click this and then click add. And now we're going to, now we're going to do a similar thing for the email. So we'll add the email in and then we're going to type in mail to colon, add the email address you'll be using afterwards. Remember, we just have to click here and then add. So now we can save this menu and go back. And the last menu we have to edit here is the main menu. So we can click into here. Now it's up to you if you'd like to include home. It's quite common to remove the home link from navigation. So feel free to delete this one and we'll also delete catalog. Now, depending on your store, you might like to have your navigation set up a little bit differently. As I mentioned before, if you're a brick and mortar store with an online store attached, you might be slightly different in how you'll set up your navigation compared to a full e-commerce store, for instance, as your customers might be more inclined to read different information based on the different shopping experiences. So for this example, we'll include a little bit of both and we'll add in our story. So go pages, our story, add, but we'll also add in shop, where this one will just link to products, all products. But what we're also going to do is include sub items underneath shop. So what we'll do is add menu item. And if we click into the link, we can go collections and we're going to select handmade bars. So you can see once we select that, it auto populates the name here. And we can go add. Now to make this a sub menu item, we select the drag icon here and we just slide it over and let go. And now you can see we've got the drop down for me. Now we're going to add another menu item to shop. So again, go collections, the next one down, and we'll just repeat this for all four. So now that that's done, we can click save menu and we are now going to head back to our theme customize tab. So we'll click back on that one, let the theme refresh. And then we can see already that these have started populating. So we just want to change the navigation that's being added underneath contact us. So if we click on the contact us block, then click change, change menu, footer menu two, select, and there we go. So now you can see we have a logo, quick links, contact us, and a little bit about the business. So we can click save, and there we go. Now, if we also look at the header navigation, you can see we have the contact, our story, and a shop dropdown. Now we're just about done with the home page, so we can scroll to the top and just make sure everything looks okay. And there's just one thing there that if we scroll back down, it's just looking at the padding here that we can see the padding slightly off from the bottom to the top. So we're just going to click into the rich text block and we're just going to add a little bit of padding to the top there to give that a little bit of balance and space that out. Now that that's done, click save. And then just for the section above the feature collection, we're actually just going to bring down the section padding for this one on the bottom. So we drag that down, maybe a little bit more. Perfect, there we go. And now it just matches on all sides. So now click save again, and we're going to now head over to the product page. Use the navigation up the top here. We'll click products, default product, and we can now see the product information we entered appear on the page. 
So straight off the bat, we've got quite a good product page here. We've got the product information and imagery. Scroll down, we have a you may also like section and then continue going down and it goes to our footer. So for a small store, this is quite sufficient. What we can see is there's a bit of an issue here with the image height. So we will just need to change that. We can do this quickly by selecting the section and then we can see here product card and we just wanna change the image ratio to square. So now that's done, we can head back up to the product section and focus on this. There's not too much we'll need to change here. Although what we will do is go through the options. So you can see the first option, enable sticky content on desktop. As you can see, as we scroll down the page, you'll notice the image is sticking with us. Now up to you as that's preference. I don't mind that effect, so we'll keep that there for now. You can also adjust the desktop media width. So we could go large here that will shrink everything in. We will just need to adjust the sizing of the heading if we were to do that. But I think I'm happy with it being at medium for now. And as we continue scrolling down, you can see a few other options here, but nothing that's currently applicable to us. We don't have a video, so don't need to worry about that. Now on the actual product itself, we can see there's the share. Let's get rid of that for now. So we can head over to the product information section, click on the share block, and we'll just remove this one. Now that's removed, we can look at what other blocks we could add in here. So as you can see, you can add things like icon with text, complementary products, product rating, pop-up, collapsible row, a few others as well. Now, one of the key ones here is you might be looking to add eventually product rating after you get a few store reviews or collapsible row. Now, collapsible row is a great way to add additional information to the product page without cluttering the page. So we'll put one in for example purposes for now. So we can go collapsible row. We probably just want to get rid of that icon because it's not really fitting the style. So we'll click on the row, then go to the icon here and we'll just say none. And once you've done that, you might find this is a good place to add anything to do with your shipping and returns, size guides, any policy information, or really just additional context about the product. What we'll just say for now is we'll go shipping and returns. And then this is where the shipping and returns content will go, for instance. And we can then click the drop down, and you'll see that appear. Once you've done that, we'll click save and you're all done. So as you know, we also did add products with compare at price and also ones with the variant. So what we can do to preview those products is if we head over to the left here and we click next to preview, if we select change, we'll then see the other products appear. So once those products appear, if we then select the product with the discounting, which was essential bundle, we can click that one. And we can now see that this one has a little bit more going on. So it has the on sale price, a sale tag, and also the variant selectors. So as you can see, the variant selectors have a few different styling options, it has a drop down, or it has the pills. Now I would suggest when you have minimal options like this, particularly for sizing, the pills are a great way to display this information and for customers to toggle between the variants. What you can see here is the 50 mil is in stock and the 150 mil is out of stock. So that's what the two different style types will look like when it's in stock and out of stock. Now when we look at the pricing section, if we click into there, you can see that there's no actual settings available to make any changes. However, if we click into product information, so the parent section, and we scroll down to theme settings, we can then see the sale badge color scheme and the sold out badge color scheme. You can select for instance, change this to background two, although as you can see, that doesn't work too well. So I think we'll keep this at just accent two for now. And you also have the option to show or hide the currency codes. So depending on if you're still selling in multiple currencies, this might not be applicable. However, something to keep in mind and a great option to have. So now that we're done with the product page, we can also check to see what this will look like on mobile. So if we go up to the desktop icon and we select mobile, we can then scroll through this page and you'll see what this looks like. Now this you may also like section, if we click into here, what we can see is there's an option for mobile layout. And what we can do is change this to one column. And this way the customer will get a full page experience and that layout won't look odd where you have two up the top and one down the bottom. So now that we've done that, we'll click save and we'll just change this now back to desktop. And now we can just head over to one of the collections. So we'll click collections, default collection. And this is how the products will appear on the collection page itself. So. If we scroll down, the first thing you will notice is the layout of the images is all over the place. So the first thing we would like to fix is if we select product grid, we will want to change the image ratio to square 
And there we go, that's now fixed. It looks so much better when that's all even. Now when it comes to sorting and filtering, it might depend on how many products you have in your collections that'll influence whether or not it's necessary. So you can always select to hide these and it gives it a very clean look. Although the sorting and filtering can be quite efficient for the customers to use and navigate through your collections. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now this theme does also offer variant filtering layouts. So you could select vertical or you can select draw, which the draw is a draw card, but I think we're best to leave that just as horizontal for now. Another option here is you can enable a quick add button. So what that allows people to do is add the product cart directly from the collection page. Now again, this is very dependent on the products you sell. Sometimes it's better to give the customer the experience that they've landed on your product page and can view everything there. Otherwise, if it's a very quick to add product, this can be a great option to feature. So we'll just hide these for now, but there's definitely nothing wrong with having those included. If your products do have a lot of information inside of this section here, for instance, if they have long product titles, you might find it more suitable to change this to a three grid across or even two. So this could also be dependent on the product imagery and also how many products you have, but you do have the flexibility to adjust that accordingly. So sometimes for a collection page, it's best to not have too much clutter up the top. However, in this context, I think this is quite fitting if you like, you can also hide the collection image, which helps reduce that space, or also hide the collection description, which takes away even more. And if you really don't like it, you can also hide that header. However, I would likely advise against that as you do still wanna provide enough context so customers know which collection they're on. Now, I'm just gonna add these back in because I think I like the look of these for now and we'll click save. And there we have it. That's a collection page all done. Now that we've done with the product and the collection page, we can now navigate to pages and then head over to our default pages. Now the default page is where we'll have our FAQs. And if we click up here to navigate to the about page, we can go preview, change our story. And you can see this will be the same thing for this page. So this page section, you can't actually add the content directly in here. It's all pulled through automatically from the CMS. So what we can do is head over to the other tab. We can go pages, click into our story, and then just inside of here, you would just want to add a little bit of text about the brand. And this is where you can also add in subheadings or anything you like. So for instance, to do that, we'll just add in a subheading here. And once you've added that in, we'll just want to change the font format. So we'll go up here, select the A, and then we'll make this a heading two. So what you can see is if we were to copy this and you changed this to a heading three, you will see this gradually get smaller as you go from heading one through to six, but we won't be needing that for this one. So we'll just remove that. Once you're done, click save. And if we head back to the customize tab and we refresh this page. So as you can see, the copy is now populated and it has the subheading, which just adds that little bit of structure formatting to the page. So you can continue adding those and breaking down the content as you like, as it will help to break up the content and make it a bit more consumable. Now, if you were wanting to make your our story page or about page a little bit more unique, we will get to that in another video as we will be exploring creating a new template, which is unique to the page's needs. So we'll leave the our story page as is for now. So for the FAQs page, you can create that using the same method as this one, but for the contact page, we'll just have to jump through to pages, contact. So what you can see here is the contact page has the page section. So a similar thing where if you add the content to the page that will appear underneath contact here, but it also has the contact form. So what we can see here, you have the name, email, phone number, comment, which is perfect for the general inquiries. So if you were wanting to make changes to the form, this would require a few code changes, or you'd have to be looking at getting a plugin to help facilitate the form, but we'll keep this nice and simple. And I think this does the job for now. So there's two things we want to do here is one, adjust the spacing and then two, just add a little bit of text underneath contact in the same method we used for the Our Story page. So let's adjust the padding first. So if we click on the contact form, we just want to add a bit of padding underneath. So let's just drag that up to 64. Yep, that works. And then for the heading section, happy to leave that as is, but we just want to now add that text underneath. So let's click save. And then we're going to head back to the other tab we have open. We'll click pages, contact, 
And once you got into a contact, we'll just do a similar thing where we'll put in some copy for the contact us page. Once that's entered, click save. Now we'll just head back to the other tab where if we refresh this, we can see that that content is now appearing on the page and we'll just want to fix a little bit of the padding here. So we'll just reduce that bottom padding, bring that in and we might just have to do the similar thing to the section below. And I think that'll do just fine. So now that that's done, we'll click save again. And last thing we'll just be checking here is the cart page. So if we click on the drop down, we'll go down to cart and select that. So as you can see, the cart is empty. So we're just going to head back to the home page and we'll click into one of these products. Let's just go add to cart. Now we can head to the cart by selecting the icon here. And now we can see what the cart page looks like. So I think straight off the bat, you've got quite a nice layout here. You've got the special instructions and also all product information shown nice and clear, but they can also edit quantities from within the cart view. So I think you can be pretty happy with that. And I think that wraps up the beginner's guide to the theme customizations. So we're just going to head back to the home page just to give it one last check and make sure it looks good on mobile. So we can scroll through here. We can see that we can flick through this. Now I might just change this quickly. I thought I might like the carousel, but I'm not too sure about it in this view. So we're just going to change this and just say, we don't want to enable swipe on mobile, but I think we can be happy leaving it as a two by two there. So we'll leave it at two columns. Keep scrolling through. So I think that all looks great. Feel free to continue adding any customizations, but for now, we're just going to click save. And once that's done, we're just going to head back to our other tab. So we'll click on that one. And once we're here, what we just want to do is click into settings. And if you navigate to payments from within payments, you want to select activate Shopify payments. So you might want to get started by activating Shopify payments and you can do so by completing the setup process. There's also other supported payment methods, for instance, PayPal. If you don't want to include PayPal, you can always select to manage and then deactivate PayPal express checkout. And this will just remove this PayPal from the store. There's also a vast range of other payment methods. So if we select add payment methods, search by provider, and then we just select this, we can start to scroll through all the different options, but depending on the location of your customers, Afterpay for instance, is a very popular one in Australia as it's one of the buy now pay later payment methods. So feel free to go through those and see what might be the best option for your store. So once you've gone through those, we can head back out and look at shipping options. So inside of shipping and delivery, so you can see that Shopify has automatically created a rate for domestic and a rate for international. So let's click manage. So within this shipping profile, you can see that we have our shipping origins. So the shop location being Australia, and then we have a domestic shipping options and we have international. Now to keep this simple, what we're going to do is delete all the shipping options except for the express at $0 and up at $15. But you might want to change this and we can go edit rate. And for this case, we'll just change this to zero for now, which will mean all domestic shipping will be express at $0. So you can go done. However, if you're wanting, you can also adjust this. So if we head back to edit rate, you can see that we can add conditions and you can start to set conditions based on the order price, for instance. So it has to be orders over $100, or you can also set a limit just to make sure the orders aren't too big. And for orders of those size, you might rather than make an inquiry before just being able to place the order, for instance. And then for international shipping, I think we'll leave this as is, as a standard international at $20. Now, obviously the transit time, this will be something to change and the rate itself, depending on the locations you're shipping, you may find it suitable to break this down into further shipping zones. However, for now, we'll leave it as just a flat rate. So once we're done in here, we'll click save. So once that's done, we can head back up and we'll head over to domains. Now, as you can see, we're currently working off the My Shopify domain. So we'll all have one of these domains. Just the prefix beforehand will be unique to everyone's store. So you can always operate your store off this domain. However, it's definitely suggested to buy a new domain or connect to the domain that you've already purchased. So you can do so by selecting buy new domain. 
And for instance, we can type in organicsoapbars.com and we can see organicsoapbars.com is taken. So we can change that up a little bit and you can also play on the different URL extensions. For instance, we could use .co and purchase this right here. So if this is the domain you're after, you can now select buy. You can buy this directly within Shopify and all will be connected for you. Now, if you were needing to connect to an existing domain that's outside of Shopify, I will be making a separate video on this, although you can select connect existing domain. You type your domain in, you click next, and Shopify will take you through the steps to adding the different DNS records to then configure this domain and sync it with the new Shopify store. As mentioned, I will be making another video on this. So if you do have any questions in the meantime, please do just let me know. So once you've connected your domain, we're just going to exit out of here. Underneath online store, we're going to go down to preferences. And now you're just going to need to add in a few more details regarding the website. So for instance, the homepage title, you can add in the meta description. So you can make this whatever you like and also optimize it for SEO if you wish. This is again, just for mock-up purposes. Feel free to add in an image for social sharing. For now, we're just going to add in the same image we use for the Favicon, just to keep it simple. And then it'll take care of the rest for you. I do highly suggest setting up your Google Analytics account. And also if you are running Facebook ads or have a Facebook business account, make sure you connect this with your Facebook pixel. If you have any questions on these, please do just let me know. And similar to the policy templates that we've been using, we do just have to make sure that we review all of these privacy settings to make sure that they do reflect the policies that we've put together and also the actual practices. Now click save. Now we head back to online store. So your new theme is just one step away from being ready to share with your customers and start selling products online. So you just need to select a plan by clicking pick a plan. And as you can see with the extended trial, you have access to all three membership tiers at just $1 a month for the first three months. So do check through which features you'll require and which are most suitable for your business. If you're just getting started, there's a great chance you'll only need the basic plan. Or if you are an existing business that has a few more requirements or an existing customer database that you're selling to, then Shopify or Advance might be more suitable. So once you've done that, you'll be able to head back to online store, manage password, uncheck this box, and your store will be accessible to the public. So if we head over to online store, click this little eye icon, which is view your store online. We can see exactly how that will look to the public. So that wraps up the beginner's guide to Shopify. I hope that's helped you get started on your e-commerce journey and also start to get to know the ins and outs of Shopify as I know it can all be a little bit confusing when you first get started. Although now you've got a beautiful website all ready to go and start selling your products online. So hopefully that's kickstarted your e-commerce journey. Congratulations and look forward to seeing your store soon.